It's the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Welcome to another episode here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It is our mission to try to bring you some news you could use, and today will be no exception to the rule. You can follow me on Twitter, also now known as X, at the Mike Prince Show. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And do remember, we have a 24-hour stream on our website at obnradio.com for your listening pleasure. And for those of you who prefer to use your smart devices, all you have to do is say, hey, play the latest episode of the Mike Prince Show, and just like that, you'll have everything that you need. And with all that being established, let us jump into this weekend edition of The Zone. Well, it has been one heck of a ride for the Prairie View A&M University family. You finally make the announcement of your athletic director to lead the way starting on August 28th. And that is none other than Anton Goff. And he will be here and hopefully he'll be here with a vision to advance Prairie View to the next level. Now, of course, this came on the heels of the determining factor of if Ashley Robinson was going to return to Prairie View. Now, this, of course, created all kind of chaos in the atmosphere, in particular from JSU Nation. And They got a bit sensitive, and rightfully so. You got your AD, you got your guy that you are uh, happy with, who has brought you to a a different level and brought you through certain storms. And now it's the word is that he's going to return, or the potentials of turning, returning back to Prairie View, and things got very sensitive and discomforting for. JSU the I love and I understand that quite well and on the backside at Prairie View there were mixed emotions yeah he's coming back and no he's not coming back so there were emotions on both spectrums with this event and as a reporter and as a person who tried to stay relevant and consistent We reported the facts and the background checking that we were able to come across. And man, here come the sensitive veins from JSU the I love. And like I stated, I do understand. I get it. And we were called liars. We were called fake news and all this kind of stuff. And uh, even had people say, man, just stick to interviews and what you do and and, and stick to the facts. And I wanted to state this and clear the air and then we're going to move on to the next chapter in the Prairie View A&M University as well as the Southwestern Athletic Conference livelihoods. Fact number one, it was first brought to the light to the rest of the HBCU athletic world by the good folk at HBCU game day. They broke that Ashley Robinson would be one of the candidates in the job search for an athletic director at Prairie View A&M University. Fact two, once we confirmed that, to be the case, we, we release the report. Fact number three, which is also critical, if none of this were true, why would Ashley Robinson A, put his name in the hat, B, show up for an interview fact number four if it were not the case that Prairie View and Ashley Robinson had come to a mutual agreement 
of he returning back to Prairie View. Why would Jackson State have to retain him to stay even though he just signed an extension? And here's something, and I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence, but the key word in all of this is retain. Retain means to hold on to something that potentially was going to get away. Now, during all of these developments here at this network, I told you guys in the beginning, I was at uh, 60, 40, then after getting some confirmation on certain things. I flipped to 6535 that maybe he would be coming to Prairie View. But then I began to dig a little deeper and concentrate just a tad bit more and said maybe, which is always the case in this market, maybe he's using this opportunity for some leverage to secure his bag at JSU. Come to find out, he's staying at JSU. That could have been the case, could not have been the case. But the fact is, JSU has their man, and now apparently Prairie View has their man. So let us focus on that at this point of the game. Now, we were very clear here at the open mic of what we thought Prairie View needed in order to move forward. We said we wanted someone who we knew that would bring some experience, not cutting their teeth for the first time. Box check. Wanted to have someone with an idea and a grip of fundraising. I'm going to say... Not sure. And other intangible factors that we thought were needed. Community outreach. That yet to be seen. Time will tell on that. And we mentioned that there were some baggage being brought. And all of us bring baggage. We want to make sure that the air has been cleared and apparently if this is the case then so be it and another interesting twist of all of this from the information we were able to gather Mr. Goff was not an original applicant for this go round now he was an applicant in 2018 but according to the resources that we've gathered there were three finalists that qualify for this vacancy that Prairie View once upon a time had and one was female but they decided to pull their name and take another job and then you had Ashley Robertson and then another familiar name for those who've been connected to the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Jasher Cox. Those were the remaining candidates standing. And once the young lady recanted her name to accept the new job elsewhere it left Jasher Cox and Ashley Robinson now according to everything that we had gathered it was decided we're going to go with Ashley and negotiations began and as a result, we have what we have now. Now, I don't know what happened after Ashley's negotiations fell through. Did Jasher Cox 
say thanks but no thanks not interested did they even reach out to see if he would be interested I don't know those factors but I do know that the call was made to Mr. Goff and Mr. Goff said I would gladly accept the opportunity to lead Prairie View and his journey will begin on August 28th now what's going to be needed is obviously a vision of where this athletic department needs to be heading under the new leadership of Anton Goff. Another factor, will Mr. Goff have full autonomy to shift the direction of the athletic department as he sees fit or will he be given some backdoor instructions on this is how things go this is how they've been going and get in where you fit in take your money keep your mouth closed and do as I say these are some determining factors that will be played out here real soon the one thing that we can assure you this was definitely the president's call to allow Mr. Goff to be that lead man for the athletic department. And apparently once they had gone through the candidates that remained and heard what they had to say and couldn't get the one that they had desired to get, she said, let me dig in my bag of resources and seal the deal and that's what we have so the journey will begin we'll see what's what how long will the honeymoon period last will there be a honeymoon period I don't know but I can tell you this we'll have our ear on the ground eyes wide open and head on a swivel to let you know what is and what's not you're listening to the zone weekend edition here from the open mic broadcast network I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. We'll be right back with more of this weekend's show. And welcome back to the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thanking you guys, as always, for joining in with us. We had one heck of a week, despite of all the roller coaster news we had going on. We heard from SWAC head official of football, Eddie Kelly, always informative on how he in, uh, brings us up to speed of the new rules and just great guy to talk with and how the conference is being recognized for the job that they've been doing by being cherry picked and guys getting the chance to go to the power five conferences to carry out their officiating careers. So if you hadn't had a chance, go back and check out what Brother Kelly had to drop on us throughout the course of this week on the Mike Prince Show and the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We also heard from Al Wash, promoter of the State Fair Classic and other uh, significant games, the um, Hall of Fame Collegiate Game and the Duncanville Game from Dallas, Texas area. And Al, as always, on point, animated, and full of history and some information and it made me wonder, it made me want to throw this out in the atmosphere to see what you think. Um, I asked Al, with his expertise, do he believe if the opportunity would present itself that he would be willing to be promoter of the Labor Day Classic? And of course, he said, Mike, hey, I'm in business and this is what I do, uh, uh, which of course meant yes so the question is I guess it's a twofold question do you believe the game needs to be promoted better for the Labor Day Classic and the next part of that question do you think Al would be a good promoter for the Labor Day Classic we know he's done it a couple of times before and uh, if you hadn't heard the full details on um, what kind of led to the 
uh, breakup of that, you can go back and check out this week's episode uh, with Al Wash. But it's a, it's an intriguing thought pattern. Can you get more? Now, I'm on record for saying I didn't appreciate how NRG handled Texas Southern and Prairie View when it comes to hospitality. Um, not sure of how much money was being brought, but I can give you a prime example. Uh, one year, it was... Um, a, a game between Wisconsin and LSU played and uh, they gave Prairie View and Texas Southern an additional $50,000 to move that game to a Sunday, which was originally planned on Saturday. And I didn't have a problem with that, but I had a serious problem playing this game that might not mean anything to anyone else other than uh, Swag Nation, Texas Southern, and Prairie View fan base. But I found it very disturbing that you're playing this Texas Southern Prairie View game with Wisconsin and LSU in the end zones. That bothered me. Now, if it had been the Texans in the end zone, I'm okay with that because it is the Texan stadium. But to have two other brands interacting with our brands I found that to be very disrespectful they could have at least washed out the end zone and had nothing in the end zone am I being sensitive maybe I am or am I being logical maybe I am but ultimately for me I thought that was one of the ultimate signs of disrespect and some of the behind the scenes on how media was handled and this, that, and the other. But that's neither here nor there. Would Prairie View and Texas Southern do well at a neutral site? I believe it would. Now, it would fall into that category of one of the classic money chasers that the conferences and HBCU schools have been accused of. But let's be honest, until we collectively can improve our home attendance and not just at homecoming, not just at your classics, but from regular games to the classic games, if we can improve that attendance, butts in the seats, we might have to continually lean on these classic games and I had another thought and I'm speaking strictly from a Prairie View perspective right now we know that during homecoming in particular you have anywhere between 30 and 50,000 people on it around the city limits and the campus of Prairie View A&M University which is an awesome site, a, a very, very huge family reunion type atmosphere. And as a result, the game attendance has not been where it should have been. Uh, and they report 11, 12, even 13,000 of a 15,000 seat capacity stadium. And it's obvious that you don't have that many in the actual stadium. Now, they may have purchased the seats, but they did not go through the gates to be in attendance of that game because the look is definitely shown when you look at video or streaming, whatever that uh, mechanism is that they're delivering the game on that day. So it made me begin to think. We know that homecoming is extremely special. What if, instead of playing that traditional homecoming game on a Saturday, that you played it that Friday evening? And follow me when I say this. You play it on Friday, and once the game is complete, use the stadium for a concert that Saturday to even enhance the homecoming atmosphere and possibly make a little bit more money. Something 
to think about. Something to think about. Because it's definitely a great atmosphere. And those might say a party atmosphere, whatever you want to call it. But a great atmosphere. Why not drop a concert after the game being played on Friday and have a concert start, oh, I don't know, around noonish or so, go from noon to three, four o'clock, and then party the rest of the night away and let the dust settle where it's going to settle and just add a wrinkle to your homecoming festivities. And I've also been on the record for saying you only have four home games in most cases because of some the neutral game with your State Fair Classic. How about just having homecoming every week? I know that might sound a bit far-fetched, but man, if you could get the flow of a homecoming atmosphere each week, it's going to be better bottom line dollar for the university. It's a great look when you do stream these games because the look is not that great when you're streaming a home game. And I don't care if it's on a Thursday night and they make up all excuses that, you know, Thursday nights are rough nights. And I do agree. I don't ever want to see Prairie View play on a Thursday night. But if you are and if you go that route, at least reverse the look. And by that, I mean, everybody likes to sit on the west side traditionally as we uh, use the term home side, but all of the stadium is your home stadium. It doesn't really matter if you're on the home or the east or the west. It's all your home side. But when you know you're going to play a game that's that challenging for the look of your brand, reverse everything and have the people who are accustomed to sitting on the west side sit on the east side, especially on a Thursday night game when you know it's going to be a challenge of getting people to come out. But how about get away from Thursday night altogether? You play your homecoming that exceptional Friday night and you get the homecoming atmosphere and homecoming themes each and every home game. And I think there's something that can be accomplished with the right partnerships, uh, community-based um, outreach. And, and when I say community-based, I'm not talking about Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, I love you. And that the truth be told, Houston, Texas is not that enthused and concerned about Prairie View when it has all the other things that can occupy their mind, space, and money. As the old adage would say, either go west, north, and a little bit south in the direction of a college station, in the direction toward an Austin, in a direction toward the Dallas and, and Huntsville area. You got a lot of untapped territory and enough, I believe, interest in Prairie View A&M University if we just let them know, and I'll use the quotes from the commissioners from the Big 12 and the Pac-12, that we are open for business. I think it's something that really needs to be explored just a tad bit deeper to find that quote unquote new money to help move Prairie View A&M University Athletics to the next level. And speaking of moving things to the next level, uh, people are still uh, rolling on the floor about Brother Ben and his Feelings about Prairie View A&M University being picked fifth in the West for 2023. And man, uh, Ben's out of the country right now, but I'm sure going to have some fun with him when he returns that um, you guys really got a kick out of it. And yes, he did dub me as not being as a true PV Nation fan in comparison to him. But all I can say is uh, um, thanks for for your participation, Ben. Uh, appreciate the energy. And <laughs> uh, it was just wow 
hearing the the results and, and seeing some of the responses to being and his what we're going to say emotional outbreak about being picked fifth and even when as far as to say is that bubble was on the hot seat i think that was a bad a, a, a bit too far um i don't think bubba's on the hot seat but i do know that bubba is fired up the panthers are fired up to prove the constituents wrong and let them know hey you can pick us five doesn't mean we have to settle for five you know and and let's go out here and take care of business now of course uh the games that i have a concern about for prairie view being successful and when you hear hopefully it will make some sense to you and not that i don't believe that prairie view is going to uh beat smu or have a chance to beat smu i'm just going on the benefit of the doubt say that smu wins that game but the games that concern me that i would think that prairie view could win but they got to show that they can follow through with the win would be the game of texas southern Southern University, Alcorn. Now, those three games right there, in addition to Sam, it's not Sam, but SMU, would have me having Prairie View at either 7-4, and 8-3. and three. Now, it's no disrespect toward any of the other conference schools that Prairie View will play for this 2023 season. But if I were to chalk up, knowing what Prairie View is bringing to the table, Knowing what Prairie View had coming back, and it, it, I feel comfortable at saying seven and four, eight and three. But if we're not careful, this thing could quickly go to six and five, and dare I say five and six. So the Panthers are going to have to get out there and say, "Here we are, this fifth ranking, and one state." Knock off that opponent. Say, take that. And what was old son? Here's five dollars. You know, we ain't gonna sing the rest of it because they're not a sponsor. But you know where I'm going. Pick me five. I, I I'll use that for motivation for the rest of this season and in fact beyond. And another game. I'm sorry that concerned me on that was the FAMU. You got to look at that. That could easily swing you from what we got now. Eight and three to seven and four six and five now that is going to be strictly handled on the field and once the dust is settled we have what we have i'm still going to stick to my guns and say worst case scenario for prairie view seven and four best case eight and three just knowing the physical grind and that anything can happen mode during a football season. Meanwhile, we do have other sports that are going to be kicking off in the fall. Of course, soccer and volleyball will be launching their 2023 campaign. Abe Garcia returning home for PV Nation and the soccer program. And Ms. Cherie Lindsay in her new adventures on the volleyball program. And we will have them weekly here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network for recaps, in-depth reports on how the team is coming along throughout the course of the year. We will be hearing from Coach Bubba McDowell, from Alvin Fosterman, and Mark Frederick of the Prairie View a University Panthers getting deeper insights on how things work are coming along and we are so excited for what 2023 is going to have to bring we will be hearing from other coaches throughout the conference there are a lot of new and exciting positions to be filled that have been filled that will hit that gridiron of course from bethune cookman university of arkansas at pine bluff jackson state you also got to include mississippi valley and there's one that is escaping me right now. No, I think I got them all. I think I got them all. Pine Bluff, Mississippi Valley, Bethune-Cookman, Jackson State. All new coaches leading the charge. Of those four, who do you think will be the most successful first-year coach 
in the conference. And if I'm just going to go on vibe and energy right now, I got to say Coach Hampton from the Pine Bluff Golden Lions would be the one to have the most success in the first year of his running buddies that'll be joining the SWAC with him. We'll see exactly how Pine Bluff does just as well as the other new coaches. In fact, Pine Bluff was picked sixth behind Prairie View out of the West. We'll see if that is Stan. But more importantly, I got confidence and believe that Prairie View won't finish fifth. They'll be above fifth. Where exactly will they fall? Time will tell on all of that. Of course, in the local high school areas, August 25th will be the start of the football season. And you can stay tuned through the Twitter X account. We're going to be releasing our projected uh, broadcast schedule for the 2023 campaign for our local high school and some selective PV games. And we're truly, truly excited about that. And it will all start. We're excited about our broadcast team that we have uh, assembled together. These guys have been working hard, grinding uh, to present uh, some quality presentations for your listening pleasures and support of our community sports programs. And, of course, you can help us continue to carry out that vision starting on September 1st through the 4th. We'll have our popcorn sales to help us raise the necessary funding for equipment, travel arrangement, and just overall production costs. You help us out by getting some exclusive gourmet popcorn for your taste palates, and you win with the wonderful popcorn, and it helps us cover the overall production costs for our 2023 campaign so it's a win-win situation be sure to keep a lookout for when we open up that pop-up store where you can be a part of that listening partner program movement it starts september 1st through the 4th for the popcorn sales but the entire month of september will be our listening partner campaign fundraising from september 1st to september 30th be sure to visit that website at obnradio.com and send your support today. We are always looking for creative content and opportunities to bring to you uh, some, some information and entertainment in that same aspect that is going to be of substance for you. And it leads us right into the welcomed edition of of Coach Heist Northern. Coach Heist Northern interview took off like hotcakes, man. Very enlightening, very entertaining, and very enjoyable uh, guy and uh, good on that microphone. And we're so excited and looking forward to what he's going to bring with us on a weekly basis. It is just so much building up here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. It's so much building up at the Southwestern Athletic Conference and yes, there is so much building up on the hill at Prairie View A&M University. And we are so mighty glad to be a part of the movement that keeps everything in the flow. And speaking of things being in the flow, I have run out of time for this week's episode of The Zone. It is always a joy and a pleasure to be with you guys each and every week. Don't forget, you can listen to the Mike Prince Show Monday through Friday right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network or by the YouTube channel at Open Mic Broadcast Network. All you have to do is hit that bell notification when you subscribe and you will never miss any episodes that we produce each and every day. And for those of you who like that bonus coverage, go and check out what we got on our 24-hour stream on the website obnradio.com. I've got to go. My time is far spent. Thank you again for joining in. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. And until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.